Hi there. We're going to do a walkthrough of the Winnebago Solus 59PX. This is the 2023 model. Many of the models in recent years are, are equivalent functionally, so we'll go through all of that. Uh, this is for renters or new owners. Um, to start, we have a key fob. And this is an electronic key fob. All you need is this to start the vehicle. This locks all of the doors. Uh, these two unlock the front, and then this one unlocks the side and rear doors, and then your panic button. So let's, uh, let's open it up and we'll start to show you what we've got. This is the uh, mosquito net. And what's nice about it is it has a magnetic entrance, so you can come in and out quickly without mosquitoes getting inside. Um, for most of the time, you can unzip this and roll it to the ceiling with two zippers. Send this up. There's also a mosquito net in the back that you can use, and sometimes uh, we'll even camp with the doors open and the nets down. Uh, and this holds up with uh, two snaps that just snap at the ceiling. To walk through the inside, uh, from the seats forward is all normal car stuff. So normal car battery and your normal AC, heat, etc. From the seats back is all uh, runs on the RV battery or the house batteries. So down here, this switch is your master switch for batteries for the RV area. So when we turn this on, you'll see all the lights come on, the refrigerator turns on, and then all of the electronics uh, needed for operating the RV are now enabled. Uh, throughout the van, you've got 12 volt ports and USB ports. On the roof, we have a 200 watt solar panel that charges the battery continually. You don't have to do anything for that. Um, and does really well. We've, we've actually never run out of battery. Let's talk about the, uh, the seating area. So we've got uh, two rear seats for passengers and they both have three point seat belts. Um, so you can do car seats, etc. cetera. Uh, for us, we've added these little uh, seat belt adapters which if, if you're a shorter person or, or have kids, this will kind of pull the, the strap off of their neck. And then up above here, the seat belts can run a little bit tight. Um, so this helps adjust it so that it doesn't over tighten on your neck. All you do is slide it up or down after you've, after you've sat and attached the seat belt, and then you lock it in in the position that's, that you like. And that keeps the seat belt from grabbing your neck. So all of the um, RV windows operate the same. So we've got a zipper to open the sunshade. And then each window has a locking mechanism. And then they all have screens. And this is good if you want to let air flow throughout the cabin. And there's two more windows above the bed and one over the uh, in the sliding door. Uh, the cabinetry all operates the same. There's a mechanical latch which opens and then each each cabinet door locks towards the ceiling with a magnet. To pull that down, you just force it down and that locks. All right, let's look at the table. So we typically operate with the operate the vehicle with the table down, so we, we can come back and, and work while we're driving, or uh, if we want to make food and have a place to eat or play cards. Um, if you don't want to use the table, it's very easy to stow away. So all you do is pop it up, the top comes off, and then the base pops out. And I'll show you where to stow this. So behind the seat, you've got um, some attachments to hold hold these in. 
So you'll see these two metal inserts. That's where you pop the stand. And then the table slides in on this black rail. Great. Up here on the floor, you've got a little extra storage. Um, the floor is very easy to sweep out. That's why we have the, the broom and dustbin in the back. All right, so looking at the refrigerator, I'm gonna open this all the way out. So you can hear it's running right now because we've turned on the coach battery. Above the trays here, you have your controls for the coolness. Um, usually we set it around four or five. And this runs all the time while you're driving. Uh, again, it runs off the house battery. Above we have the freezer and it does work. Finally, for lights, there's two main switches here. So this turns on the all the house lights. This one turns on the outside lights. Beneath e each cabinet, you have puck lights, and they operate with a simple push button. And that's uh, underneath both cabinets, above the bed, here, and above the passenger seats. We're going to look at your control panel, uh, the Truma system for a heat and hot water, uh, operating the water pump, the generator, and then your solar information display. Uh, this big panel is read-only. It's just information about how the solar is doing. So right now we were at about 2.1, 2.2 amps of solar charging. Um, we're in the shade right now. Um, but still pulling some amps. Uh, typically, it's, it runs about five to seven or more in direct sunlight, and you can see it's charging. Up above here, um, you can check on several things from this panel. So LPG, liquid propane gas, you can see it shows two thirds full. Used for uh, heat, hot water, and the stove and it takes a long time to run out of gas. The battery is full, and this runs off of solar. It really only takes half a day for that to charge properly in our, our experience. Um, and finally, the gray tank. So this is your water from the shower and sink. So semi-clean, semi semi-dirty water, and it's showing empty. The gray tank is a little over 20 gallons, as is the freshwater tank. You can see this light, it says the pump is on. This is the water pump. See that turns off and on, and there's another switch in the back near the water control panel, and they are connected uh, together so you can turn this on or off from either location. Let's look at the generator. Uh, the generator runs on gasoline and it's only needed for running the air conditioner and to run your 120 volt house outlets, your, your big outlets for laptops or appliances. To turn it on, hold the start button for three seconds. It takes about 30 seconds um, for the generator to prepare to power the the outlets uh, after about 30 seconds you'll hear a click and that's when you know you're ready to go this switch is to turn on your propane gas so this is needed if you want to run the stove or if you want to turn on the heater and water heater so let's do that now using the truma control panel to turn on the truma control panel press the dial to enable the menu and you can see the van heater icon blinking. So I'm gonna press it. And then you twist the dial to set the low temperature that you want for, let's say for the night. So if we set this at 66, press the dial again to lock in that temperature, and then it'll automatically turn on um, 
when the temperature drops below what you've set. You can also add some vent speed to your, your heater by rolling over to the fan icon, press the dial, and then you can choose eco or high for your van speed and you can see how that icon changes. Press the dial again to select. And you can operate the fan by itself. And we do like to do that sometimes if we just need a little fresh air. Um, the fan vent actually runs a little bit cool. So if it's, if it's a little bit warm, it's actually a nice, it's actually a nice feature to use. So we press the vent, we can press the vent speed and that will circulate um, fresh cooler into the RV. So I'll go ahead and press that off now. Finally, in the middle, we have our water heater. And again, for both the heater and water heater, the liquid propane gas switch must be on. So whether that's blinking, press the dial. And then you have three modes, eco mode, which is the most efficient uh, power usage but it only heats the water to a little over 100 degrees. And then hot, which is more like um, house water uh, temperature. Uh, this is typically what we, what we like to use. It does take some time for that to heat up. And last is the water heater. So the water heater icon is blinking now. Uh, you still need the gas uh, switch on. So while it's blinking, I'll press the dial and we have three settings. Eco is, eco is not as hot, it's more for hand washing, uh, it's a more efficient water heating system. Hot is if you want to use the shower or you want some really hot water. And then boost heats up the water a little bit quicker, so it heats it up maybe 15 minutes rather than 30 or 40 minutes for the other settings. Um, we usually just use hot. I'm going to go ahead and turn these settings off so you can see how that works. So we'll press the heater, roll it all the way down to off. Um, if you ever see an error on this screen, sometimes it's because maybe the gas isn't on and you were, you were trying to use the heat or water heater. Um, if that happens and you're not able to back out of the error, turn off the main RV battery at the front um, above the fridge to Turn off the RV battery and start it over and that will clear it as well. All right, next we're gonna talk about the pop-up tent. All right, let's talk about the pop-top. Uh, so pop-top tent is actually a little bit bigger than the um, Murphy bed down here. So uh, I like to sleep up there. Um, I'm 6'2", and you can tell in the van here I have just enough height to, to stand comfortably. It's about probably 6'2 and a half in here, I would say. Um, so let's bring the ladder down. So the ladder is two pieces, um, and basically we've got this strap wrapped around the feet of the ladder. So just press the red button to unlatch that strap, and this one in here. And it's just on hooks on the inside, so just let it swim down, and then take the top piece off, and I just slide it straight down and we insert it into the top half. Once that's up, you have two latches come on each side. And that's set. So go ahead and re reconnect these straps because that's how you pull the pop top down. Now to open the pop top, there's two security latches on each side. Uh, so let's get a close up of this. All right, so these two straps, this is a um, extra security strap that basically locks in the first strap. So you always wanna have both of these straps attached when you're driving. So press the black button to open the top strap, pull that down, and then we're gonna open the butterfly latch and we just turn it halfway and then I lock it back down and then lift it. And you'll see there's a magnet and that holds that latch up. And by using that, that keeps the, the fabric from tearing when you're pulling this back down or getting caught. So it's important to put that up. So I'll do it on the other side really quick. So that latch, 
open the butterfly latch, turn it halfway around and back down, lock it to the magnet. Then from here, I'm just going to push and it'll rise by itself. Pop top here has some tent windows with screens. And I do like to leave one just a little bit open to let some airflow as it's rising and lowering. Um, it makes it a little easier to, to shut the pop top. So this is a screen like a tent so you can get some airflow up top. Uh, these are your front window covers. So this covers your windshield and your two um, windows for your driver and passenger. So this is good for blackout at night when you're sleeping or for privacy uh, at camp. Once we're parked at camp, we usually put these up and we leave them up. And while we're talking about camp, I want to show you how the, um, the seats turn around for, and we usually leave the seats turned around for days if we're, if we're parked at one spot. Uh, but first, let me put the ladder back up and I'll show you how we do that. I'm going to bring the pop top down. As the pop top comes down, just make sure all the tent fabric is coming inside. Good. And once it's down, you can tuck the tent fabric back behind the latches. This just rolls up behind here, nothing fancy, and then behind there. Uh, while this is down, I'm going to show you, if you do want to leave bedding up here, you do have a little space in the middle. However, the edges, it's a little bit too tight. Um, so you are able to leave maybe your quilts and blankets up here. Just make sure you kind of fold them in from the edge. Um, but your pillows aren't aren't going to fit. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and re-latch uh, the two latches on each side. So first thing is the butterfly latch comes down, flip it up, turn it halfway, and we bring the security latch above that. We'll do the same on the other side. Butterfly latch comes down, and then the security latch. And make sure those are set when you're driving or else this can pop up while you drive. Pull up the ladder. So again, it's two pieces, two separate pieces. Sometimes that latch catches when you slide down. And I just put the ladder straight up and rest it on top. So as this goes up, just make sure it clears that lip. And then we, again, we latch this around the feet. And then we do the same on the other side. All right, let's turn the front seats around so that you can see how the lounging setup works. Uh, so we'll step to the outside and we'll show you where the latches are. All right, so underneath the seat, you'll see a yellow tab. So you lift this yellow tab and turn the seat in a little bit and let go of that tab. And then the seat turns around. Now the seat um, won't quite fit all the way around, so you do have to pull it forward. This is a normal um, bar here that lets you pull the seat forward, like old school cars. And then you bring this around. Same on the other side. Again, that yellow tab is on the side nearest the door of each seat. Pull the seat forward. And then bring it around. So now you have your lounge area set up, play cards or eat. Uh, it's actually really, really comfortable. Just send it back, turn it 
turn the seat and you'll just hear it lock. Same for the other side. Great. So we're gonna look at the stove. The propane stove has a glass top. Um, we've added some vinyl on top just to protect it from scratching the glass. So all this scratching is okay. Great, so you've got two burners. Uh, in order to turn the stove on, you have to make sure that the gas is turned on. Uh, the stove has a lighter built into it. So basically you turn on the gas and then hit the lighter. To turn off, simply turn the knobs back to off. Now the stove does, um, it can set off the fire alarms on the ceiling, especially if you're maybe charring some burgers. Um, so when you're using the stove, we do recommend having this, this screen open or the window open. And while we're at it, um, here's your fire alarm here, and there's one above the bed. And then finally, you've got a fire extinguisher below this uh, passenger seat. Um, for emergencies. Great, moving on in the kitchen. <clears throat> got a little extra uh, pull-out table here. Um, it's not a cutting board. We don't use it for a cutting board. It, we do have a cutting board that we that we we use. Uh, we keep it up here or sometimes below the sink. But that way um, you know, you don't cut into the surface. And same up here. All right, so we'll put this back. So to put that back in, you want to make sure that's locked. So there's a lock mechanism. Push that up and pull it over. And while we're here, the fridge also has a lock that needs to be engaged when you're driving. Otherwise, your food's going to come flying out. Great. Uh, while I have this open, I'll show you the uh, dishware that we use. So you've got cups, plates, bowls, and some glass uh, coffee mugs. And then we use a French press coffee setup. Got to keep in here. Now for hot water on that, um, we use our pots and pans. So we just boil water with the pots on the stove. And then this mixing bowl has uh, measuring cups and spoons inside as well. Great. And then our silverware we keep in this drawer. This is a little tray that we've, we've built. Forks, spoons, knives, uh, chef's knives, and then spatulas, um, bottle and can openers, etc. So, quickly, I want to show you the uh, house outlets. So, there's numerous, I think there's four or five, I think there's five house outlets in the vehicle. There's one there, one here. Here's more USB and 12 volt. Again, um, the house outlets will only operate um, if you're running the generator or you're plugged into shore power at an RV site. All right, so now we're going to do the uh, water. I'll show you how the water looks when it's running. So again, we need to make sure the water is on. Um, the kitchen sink. You've got, just like your house, cold and hot water, and then this water is running into the gray tank. Um, this is our little dish scrubber, and then we found this um, little drying rack we use for washing food or fruit or just drying out um, items. We actually leave this down when we're, when we're driving. Um, to 
uh, determine how much uh, fresh water you have. This is the fresh water tank indicator. So you turn on the light switch and it shows you how much fresh water you have left. So you can see here we've got around a little less than half and uh, we've added this little vinyl piece to show what the full tank uh, looks like. Just above here, um, this is the Eco Hot preheat option for the hot water. Um, so it works uh, on top of the water heater settings that we looked at before. To use it, turn the knob over to preheat and we usually count out about eight seconds. And that's doing a, a fast heat of the hot water tank, which is about two and a half gallons. Once you've hit eight seconds, turn it off and then you should have uh, hot water within a few seconds of turning on the faucet. Um, if it didn't quite get there, you can do it again for another eight seconds, and that will let you get your water a little bit faster. Just be sure to turn that off. All right, let's look at the bathroom. So this is a, uh, a wet bath. It's got a shower and a cassette toilet. And when you're driving, you always want to make sure that the bathroom door is locked. So it just presses all the way that way to open it, turn it all the way to the left. Uh, this door closes with a magnet, so just open it near the door handle, and you can hear that magnet pop. Great, so the bathroom has a light here. I have a mirror and there's also a handle inside of the door. Uh, so looking at the toilet, so this is a cassette toilet. It's about five gallons. Um, it, it looks and operates similar to your house toilet with the lid and um, seat lid. Here on the side, you have the handle to open and close the um, cassette tank valve. So when you're going to do your business, you need to make sure that this valve is open. So let's look inside. You can see that close and open. So after you've done your business, um, flush by pressing the flush water button. Once you're done, go ahead and close the tank. In order to see how full the tank is, Behind the tank is an indicator, and it's showing green. Uh, once it starts to get full, it'll show maybe half red, half green, or completely red, which means it's time to change the tank. And we'll show you how to change the tank in a moment. The toilet also swivels, depending on what kind of space you want. Um, so you, want, you could even have the door open, I suppose, if you wanted to use the bathroom that way. Um, you can see here we've got our shower drain and a heat vent. And then on the side, this is the toilet paper holder. And it has a waterproof gasket. Now the little um, the little handle connection or the little locking piece here is a little bit dainty, so it only turns a quarter of the way in order to lock and open. Any further than that, and it kind of pops out, so. To take a shower, um, it's required that you use the shower curtain because if you don't, the water does flow out through the door edges and a lot of water actually goes onto the floor. So you can see that this has snaps and this shower will hang above the whole door using these snaps. Once all the snaps are in, make sure that the shower curtain is sitting inside of the, the, the tub rim and that all of the, the sides are covered and you can take your shower without making a mess. To operate the shower, um, these uh, shower knobs or faucet knobs are the same as in your, your house with the water on. Um, 
simply operate the dials so your hot water and your cold water. Okay. Now once you've achieved the a warmth that you like, um, instead of turning it all on and off um, to save water, you can press this button and that will basically turn off the water from, from here, leaving your hot and cold settings in place. So in order to save water, what we'll do is we'll rinse down and then we'll turn it off, lather up, turn it back on, and then rinse and turn it off pretty quickly. So showers do use a lot of your fresh water. In fact, if you were, if you had a family of four, you could use most of your fresh tank um, with one shower each, if you're not careful. Um, without a shower entirely, um, you should be good for three or four days on the road with, with your fresh water. All right, let me turn this off and we'll close the door. So that magnet catches and make sure you lock it all the way over. Now, typically with the toilet, um, if we're at a campsite, we will absolutely use the camp toilets or the RV park toilets and reserve this for um, maybe nighttime use or emergencies, but it is there. So it's, it's worth using if it's, um, if you want to. All right, let's talk about the bedding. So this is the Murphy bed and this bed folds up and down. Um, it's a full size bed. I'm 6'2", and I do, I do fit in here um, reasonably well. Uh, you do have to be careful not to put your foot through the screen if you have your windows open, um, but it's reasonably comfortable. Um, if you're six feet um, or less, uh, the bed's gonna be really good. Up top, we've got some cabinets really quick. They all open the same way, and they all have a magnet on the ceiling that lets those lock up. House plug. Um, we have some fairy lights that we like to use. We leave up here, which is kind of fun on a long camping trip. On the other side, we have some clothing baskets we like to use. Um, kind of reduces the need for suitcases or other kind of bags and baggage that take up space in the van. All right, so let's put the bed up. Um, in order to the, for the bed to go up, um, you can have your bedding um, here. However, uh, anything bulky does need to go up underneath this cabinet in order for the bed to fit. So we place that up, and then this pad topper that we use. Needs to come up. You need to go all the way up in order to fit. So basically roll it up so it's it's halfway and then underneath you just grab the frame and push it up so in order to lock this into place push it back and then there's this single locking latch that locks down and the bed is secure um, while you're driving or if you just want space uh, in order to put this uh, table down, this also has its own latch. So you open the latch and lift it. Uh, the table leg is a little bit sensitive, we've found, and um, the screws can be stripped out sort of easily. So for the leg to come out, you have to make sure to push it to the side, like well over to the side, and then begin to open it. And as you're coming down, see how it catches on the side? Again, push it over to unlock it, and then bring it down. And then you're set. To bring it back up is the same process. Push the leg over, so let it unlock. Pull it up, the bottom locks with a magnet. And then the top locks in place the same way. Again, it's important for this to shift over when you're trying to unlock or um, move the leg. This panel 
is where you find um, all of your fuses and breakers for the electrical system. The Murphy bed only comes to here, so you have tons of space for gear. We've had surfboards fit under here. Uh, it's, it's really convenient. We have plenty of storage here on the side, a ton of storage as well. Under the floor storage, uh, we keep a first aid kit. And on this side, we keep our potable drinking water hose and filter, and then our 30 amp power cable. The camp chairs and table that we use also fit nicely under here um, to keep those out of the way. Uh, what's nice is when you're traveling, um, the Murphy. All right, while we're back here, let's look at the air conditioning unit. Again, this is only going to operate if you're connected to shore power or if you have the generator running, which runs on gasoline. Uh, the controls are very simple. Um, this front dial is basically low fan, high fan. And then if you want to um, run the AC or the cooling, you have low cool and high cool. And that's it, it's extremely easy. So on the 59PX, uh, there's an extra, I believe it's 16 inches worth of um, cargo space. So up here on the sides, we have the L-Track system. With these loops that uh, allow you to hang things, here's some hooks that we like to use for backpacks, coats. Um, we put our fly fishing rods in there. We also have a bike rack um, that lets you mount your bikes uh, into the L-Track with your forks and then storing your front wheel um, separately below back here. So quickly we have the mosquito nets. Uh, and these are just a simple zipper enclosure. Put the mosquito net away. Uh, you do have to have, take some care or else um, we have seen this tear a little bit before and we've done a little bit of fixing. So to put it away, I just loosely pull it up to the Velcro and then loosely attach the Velcro. And that's plenty to keep it in place. So this side and then we'll show you the water control system. Great. With the water control panel, you can see this uh, this red light. That's the water pump. This is the same switch operation as the one in the front. So if you turn it off here, it will turn it off uh, up there as well, and vice versa. Uh, you can see here we've got an outdoor shower hookup. And that leverages the um, outdoor shower hose. So connect this, kind of like a gas line connection. And then you can use outdoor shower. Now up front, near the front uh, window screen on the floor, there's another connector just like this. Now to disconnect this, you want to make sure not to spray water everywhere. So the first step, you will get the wide angle here, is to empty the water first like this. Make sure these are off, of course. And then to disconnect this water thing, um, basically push in the valve to unlock it, and it pulls out. Then to empty this hose before putting it away, just drop the valve down and then press the nozzle and it will release the water. All right, so we're gonna hook up the hose to the water control panel. Now the hose is stored under here, as we talked about. This is a BPA-free potable water hose. So the short side closest to the filter is what we're gonna to use to connect to the water system. You pop this white lid open, connect the hose, and then to tighten this, um, you actually turn the white attachment nut. 
Uh, in order to fill the tank, you need to make sure to match the power fill tank pattern. So this is down, this is over to the left, this is up, and the blue is down. So that sets the panel in order for the water to inflow into the fresh water tank. Um, we have a valve here, so this will connect to your RV hookups or to any household water, water faucet, etc. Um, just make sure you don't have to blast the pressure and it can do damage. So we usually like to keep it 50 or below or even 20 or 30, to be honest. Um, the other way you can use this hose is for um, your city connection. So the city water connection is this center tab. And um, to match that, let's connect these really quick. So the only change is this. All right, so what this will do is send your, your water directly from the city line to your faucet and the shower. So basically is on-demand water. And you can leave this connected all the time when you're at an RV park or campground um, that has water hookups. The only thing is, is the back doors will not shut uh, with this connected. So um, if, you're if you're okay with having the mosquito netting connected, then you can leave this uh, connected all the time. All right, finally, um, the third one we use most of the time is dry camping. So this is where you're just going to run off of the water tank. So let me disconnect this water line. And again, you want to be careful about uh, making a mess here with the water. So usually you want to disconnect from the city water first, make sure your hose is empty as possible, and then disconnect from here. Um, usually a little bit of water does spill out, so we keep a towel, a towel handy to um, wipe up any spills. Uh, most of the time when you're out boondocking or or uh, out camping, you're going to use the dry camping setting the most. So that's here. So this runs off of the freshwater tank. Great. So let's put the hose back. So to uh, have this go in properly, um, just be aware of the hinges on the, each side because those hinges do kind of press in on any gear you have inside. So you kind of want to make sure those are, are clear. And then we're going to pull up the 30 amp power cable and show you how to connect that in a moment. So let me set this over here. I'll show you how this uh, outdoor shower curtain works. So there's a little Velcro here that we've added. And these are your shower curtain rods. These connect together and then this cotter pin connects through the hole and down and then the shower curtain you keep it underneath the bed and to hang this it's a series of velcro straps you simply hang over the curtain rod and attach along the rod and then they've included some magnets, which allow you to hold the curtain against the edge of the van for privacy and convenience. All right, to put the rod away, simply the reverse. Pull the cotter pin, separate these. So make sure it goes back into the housing slot and the Velcro goes down. And on this side, we do need to put the cotter pin back in, lest we uh, lose it. So that's reattached. Okay. And then Velcro down. The reason we added this Velcro is because uh, these have a tendency to pop out while you're driving, and it's uh, loud and annoying. Great, so let's look at the, the power hookups. So your power is located on the driver's side of the van. Now this is 30 amp. Um, most RV campsites have 30 amp uh, power. So to connect this, this is your um, this is your uh, van connected side. 
this is little, you kind of have to give, give it a little oomph. And these connect in a certain pattern. These are different shapes. So make sure you line that up, press it in, and then twist on this cap without stripping the threads. Great. So we always connect from here first. And then we take the other line to the RV hookup. When you hook this up into the RV um, park um, hookups, you'll connect this um, and there should be a, um, a breaker or an on off switch for your 30 amp port. Again, this will run air conditioning and your house power outlets and it will also uh, recharge the battery. To disconnect, simply unscrew the top, pull it out and close the cover. Uh, we use these leveling blocks um, in order to have a level sleeping surface. It makes a huge difference. To use the leveling blocks, simply remove this blocking mechanism and then you build your, your blocks. So what you want to do is start at the smallest block and put it under the wheel and then stack two blocks in front of it. And that way you can drive up block by block to a height that you like. Now, the reason we put it in front of the wheel is because behind the wheel, there's um, your mud flaps. And these do get in the way um, sometimes if you're trying to go very high, but it can work back there. Um, once you've driven up onto the highest block, um, if you need more blocks, we actually steal, steal the block from behind to build a taller block uh, ahead of that. Uh, in order to tell if your uh, van is level, uh, we like to use a 360 degree bubble level. So this is the 360 degree bubble level. Um, and in order to use this, we zoom in there. Basically you want that bubble to be as close to the center as possible. Uh, it doesn't have to be exact, but when it's in the middle, um, it really helps get a good night's sleep. All right, to put this back together, we'll just restack. Um, next, we're gonna talk about emptying the gray tank. So follow me and we'll pull out the gray tank hose and we'll show you what that looks like. So open the cover. And we have an Americanizer for certain connections, but most of the time you don't have to worry about that. So this is the hose. Um, let's connect this to the other side. So most of the time this hose is going to be used if you're in a, at an RV park or campsite that has a um, gray water um, drain system. So to connect this, you open the valve. It's, it's on there pretty tight, understandably. Once that's open, you can connect your hose. So it goes on the same way. And uh, in order to open the flow from the gray water tank, you simply pull out this valve. And we will have a little water in here. And if you're at an RV site, basically you can put this down the uh, drain Usually there's a cap or something on there, so you basically put this all the way down the drain, lay the cap over it, and you can actually just leave this valve open and let that water drain as you use it. Um, if you do choose to uh, drain your gray tank somewhere besides a, uh, an RV park, um, be sure you're well away from bodies of water, rivers, so that you're not polluting polluting those systems. Or if your water is really dirty, make sure you dispose of this um, appropriate. All right, to put this back is the reverse of taking it out. So we'll go ahead and slide it in. Close the latch like so, so it's locked properly. Check that. Next is your, uh, your gas system. So this is not a self-serve propane gas fill up. Um, it must be taken to a, a shop or a dealer that has the ability to do that. It's very easy and it's, it's relatively inexpensive. So just pull up to your um, gas station or a hardware store and say, I need an RV tank fill. 
RV propane tank fill and they can help you out. Um, this switch is the main propane off on switch, kind of the master switch. So um, it is recommended to have this off while, while you're driving um, to uh, make sure you're safe. All right, finally, let's talk about emptying your cassette toilet. So this is found on the driver's side in the middle of the van. Uh, this is a locked um, door access, so you'll need to use your physical key. So press that in. Once that's open, you see these buttons will then push. So press them pretty deep to open the latch in order to get access to the cassette toilet tank. To pull this out, the valve on top needs to be closed inside of the bathroom. Um, otherwise it won't pull out. So when you grab this blue tab, lift it to pull it out. If it doesn't pull, then it's likely that that valve in the bathroom is still open. So with that all set, pull it out with the handle. And you have a number of handles here. And we just wash this with clean water and vinegar, so we're not dealing with anything too un untoward. Um, so on top here, we've got a couple of things going on. This is your, um, this is where the um, water and liquids come out. <clears throat> And then on top, you have a, a butt, round button here near the opening, which will let air flow in order to drain the tank. So I'll open the front valve with our water and vinegar. And then you're able to empty this at any rest stop or um, camp bathroom, etc. You just pour it into the toilet. And to empty it, Lift it from the handle and behind, and you'll slowly push that valve and empty it forward. Once it's empty, um, we usually use the outdoor shower hose and um, spray it on the inside with that water. To open this tank um, cover, turn this valve you're able to fill it with water um, and, and wash it and um, pour out that extra uh, liquid. Um, to finish the job, be sure to fill the tank with about a gallon of water, and then you will add your um, blue treatment um, to the tank. This is the blue um, treatment uh, tablets that we use. Um, we also use a bottle of, li of liquid as well. Um, if you have the bottle, um, basically a little bit of this is actually supposed to treat about 40 gallons. This is only five gallons, but we still add maybe a quarter bottle of the blue, or, or we just throw in a single tab. Uh, even though these tabs treat 40 gallons, uh, we use it anyway, and it's, it's just bonus power. So once that's filled, I'm going to close the valve and replace the cover and then attach this in order to put it away. So you do have the ability to use this handle if you want to walk this to a location at the campsite that's a little farther away from your vehicle. With everything closed, it just slides back in. As you slide it back, all the way back, you'll, you'll hear you will hear the latch lock in and you know you're set. So we shut the door and it's the reverse process. Be sure to lock this door and you're all done. Uh, finally is the gasoline. So the, it takes regular gasoline. Uh, it's recommended to use 87 or better octane gasoline. Uh, the door just opens, there's no, there's no lock, and it's a regular gas fill-up. Uh, we usually get about 18 miles to the gallon driving conservatively. Um, if you drive fast or heavy on the pedal, you could be 14 or 15. We've gotten as good as 20 driving on flat highways. Great, so now we're looking at the Ram Promaster chassis. 
So we have a large uh, infotainment display. Um, it does not play movies, but you can connect your Android or iPhone to um, listen to music and uh, stream maps to, to the screen. So everything here is normal car stuff. You got USB ports, 12 volt port, and this is a wireless uh, charging mat. Um, a little bit on the right here in your glove compartment. Um, this is where we keep our registration, a pre-driving checklist, and, and insurance. It's not a large compartment, so that's about all it's going to hold. We do like to keep this microfiber towel to wipe the screen um, to keep that from being damaged. Um, we don't really use any cleaner on these screens just to protect them. Up top, you got a secret compartment for uh, valuables if you're going to be out hiking, etc. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the car. So with the key fob, I usually just set the key fob in this little compartment here when I'm driving. All you have to do is use the button start. Um, one thing to note, um, as a backup, you do always have uh, the air conditioning and heating options from the van if the RV heat or AC isn't functioning the way you would expect. Um, quickly on the steering wheel, we've got your cruise control, which is regular uh, cruise control. The center button turns it on, and then you can set it by pressing the minus or plus button. Um, behind the steering wheel, where your fingers would be, are volume controls and a selector, which will help you control the infotainment screen. All right, looking at the windshield wiper, um, these do have automatic wipers, which means um, the windshield wipers will come on when it senses rain, so long as you are on the A setting. Uh, on the left side are your lights. So again, with the A selection, which is automatic lights, um, you shouldn't have to worry about changing anything. So these will turn on the lights when it gets dark, and it also automatically sets your high beam and low beam when a vehicle is approaching. Looking at the controls on the armrest, these are your mirror controls. So you have two mirrors on each side. You have a large mirror and a fisheye mirror. So to control the upper left large mirror, we'll set this to that arrow and put it in a position that's comfortable for you. And then to change the fisheye mirror, we'll set it down to the lower left arrow and that will move the fisheye mirror. Next, if you're in a tight spot, this will pull the mirrors in automatically. Now, um, the manual says do not try and move the mirrors manually with your hand. Always use these electronic controls. Here you have your power windows. And then this is your locking mechanism. And this will lock and unlock uh, all of the locks in the vehicle. So you'll notice with the car on, um, you don't have a conventional rear rear mirror, this is actually a camera. Um, because the vehicle's so long, um, this is really helpful. Uh, underneath here you have a few menu items. To enable the menu, press the square button underneath, and you'll see now it brings up the brightness control. So you can set the brightness lighter or darker. If we press the menu again, it will move to the controls for positioning. So if we want it a little lower or a little higher, we can use that. Um, if you want to use a normal mirror, this little tab under here, if you switch it down, it will turn into a standard mirror. Okay, down below on the main screen is where you have your rear view camera. To enable that, it'll come up automatically when you go into reverse. And you can see it has the guiding lines for turning. Um, there are sensors all around the van, proximity sensors, so that if you're getting close to a rock or a tree or branches, um, you'll hear, hear those alerts um, go on when you're close to something. You can see here the automatic emergency brake. This turns on whenever you put the vehicle into park and you can feel it engage. Uh, to release it when you want to drive, you can press the button and that releases the emergency brake, parking brake, or you can simply um, gas through it and it will release on its own. Okay, some important notes uh, to consider when driving the Solus is it's a large vehicle. So it's about nine and a half feet tall. 
uh, which means it's not going to really fit in any garage for all intents and purposes. Uh, you're also not going to make it through any drive throughs for food or Mickey D's, so just be sure to park and uh, go where you need to go on foot. Um, when driving um, the vehicle, be sure to check your mirrors when you're making turns, wide turns, um, and also we like to drive at a reasonable speed, speed limit or lower to save on gas and to have a smooth, enjoyable ride. Um, another important thing to note is your pre-driving checklist. Uh, the things you want to really consider before you start your drive. Uh, all the cabinets need to be closed and locked. Make sure the refrigerator is locked in place as well and that you don't have any loose items on the countertops or other places because they do end up uh, flying around the vehicle. Uh, on the control panel, before you start driving, be sure your gas valve is off. Um, we also make sure the generator is off and the water pump is off um, for safety to make sure that um, you don't run into any trouble while you're driving.